Come on then, Tom. Let's Thomas go. is one of an estimated 300 people in Britain who has fish odour syndrome. It's a metabolic disorder that causes sufferers to emit a variety of unpleasant smells. You'll be tired, right? From rotting fish, to stale sweat, to even faeces. We first noticed it when we started weaning him, when he was about six months. We used to notice it on his hair and we used to think it was crazy, you know, he'd smell of fish, which we thought was really strange. We went to the doctors and things um, about it, but they sort of passed it off and didn't really know. I think they thought I was mad, really, saying my son smelled of fish. Fish order syndrome, or TMAU, is incurable, and Thomas's life is dominated by his condition. Rachel Collins has no idea what's wrong with her. But she's been plagued by a smell since her teens. It's an odour that's obvious to those around her. I remember I was in a shoe shop with my mum and my sister. They both just suddenly said, oh, what's that awful smell? And um, we all realised that it was me, and just I just felt really embarrassed. Just really strong body odour, but very, very bad, very offensive. Rachel's smell problems continued on and off throughout her university years. I'd been out one night to the pub with lots of people, and the next day I overheard people commenting, and I realised then that it had happened the night before in the pub. People made comments like, um, they got me a pint, instead of a pint of beer, a pint of BO, um, that kind of thing. Just little comments like that. The only thing that Rachel can predict about her problem is that it will come at the worst of times. If it could be the most embarrassing, humiliating situation for it to happen, then it would happen in that situation. So if I was at home with my family, it wouldn't happen. But if I was out in the pub with lots of people, people that perhaps I didn't know, that's when it would happen. Lack of social life apart, the idea of being intimate with a man is a scary prospect. Rachel understands only too well the problems of smelling bad. It has made her feel so isolated that she spent most of her 20s travelling in Asia. It just feels much more relaxed almost like you can kind of breathe there more easily. You can just be yourself. Now 32, Rachel is determined to start a life back in the UK. But she's not finding it easy. As soon as the plane lands <laughs> in England, it feels as if you're walking into a sterile environment where you... It's almost as if nothing is real. I feel a sense of dread whenever I come back and I feel almost trapped, I suppose. Just the way that society is, I don't fit in, I'm not... I'm not acceptable here. Constantly fearing a smell attack, Rachel rarely socialises with anyone else but her sister, Esther. Can I get a pint and a half? Esther is her only confidant. But then instead of maturing it like a treasure. I've kind of noticed the last couple of days people kind of moving away from me. Ooh. I haven't noticed anything. It makes me more worried that I'm smelling bad. It's one of those things you get a whiff of, and it's quite strong and uh, it's quite sour kind of smell. I can reassure you about times I've been with you, but, I mean... Rachel's order problems makes relationships with men almost impossible. 
I would just be conscious that they would, were feeling very repulsed by me. I just felt so ashamed and so embarrassed and guilty because it's affecting other people, other people that you're around. And I know it's not nice and I'm aware of that and that's what kind of killed me, that it was kind of subjecting other people to this awful smell. I think she had a boyfriend a couple of years ago for um, a month or so and they'd see each other every now and then. And it seemed to be going all right, but then it just never got past a certain point. I just felt like a freak, really. Um, just felt very, very ugly. Until only last week, Rachel had believed she was alone with her mystery condition. But her life is about to be turned upside down. Rachel has made an exciting discovery. She has uncovered fish order syndrome on the internet and recognises the symptoms as similar to her own. I just went on the internet and I came across a chat room. Lots of people had written their stories and it just sounded exactly similar to me. For all this time, I thought that I was the only person, really. And then all of a sudden, I was suddenly aware that there were other people that had it as well and that perhaps there was a name for it. There was, it was an actual recognised condition. Still not sure whether this was the condition she had, Rachel and her mum visit University College London Hospital to see a leading specialist in fish order syndrome. What is it you think it smells? Is it your sweat, your skin? It's sweat, it's my underarms. Um, it's like that nervous, stressed sweat. Mm -hmm. And what sort of smell was it? Body odour, like kind of really bad kind of rancid kind of smell. The inherited diseases that can cause this sort of problem tend to cause all of your secretions in the body to, to smell and it has a characteristic smell of rotting fish, right. um, which it doesn't sound like is something you've necessarily mm. noticed. But we can certainly test for that. Right. Can we just pop you on the couch over here? So are you aware of a smell at the moment? Not really. Mm. Let's start with your hat, okay. see if I can put anything off there. This is the ultimate indignity for Rachel, being smelt by a doctor. I'll sit you back down again. Dr Lackman doubts whether she is suffering from fish order syndrome, but sends her for blood tests anyway. OK, nice to see you. It's pretty humiliating, I think, to have a condition with a name like that. And with symptoms like that, it's not, it's not something that you'd want to tell lots of people about. And it just feel, it just, it's not nice, really. Rachel now has an agonising three-week wait to know whether she has a disease that she finds too embarrassing to name. For Rachel, paranoia about personal smell rules her life. Today, she's back at the University College London Hospital to find out if the smell that has dominated the way she lives is fish order syndrome. I'm feeling a bit apprehensive about it, really, but not quite sure what's going to happen. I really don't think it is that condition, but if it is, then I'll be quite surprised. OK, so you're back for the results of the test we sent off last time. Mm. So we sent the urine off to Sheffield, mm. and the results coming back show that there is trimethylamine in the urine, which means that you do have trimethylamine urine. Oh, um, right which is a diagnosis, so that's, that's good from that point of view.
After 14 years of feeling like someone who could not control her order, Rachel has become the 301st person to be diagnosed with fish odour syndrome in the UK. And it doesn't have to be fish odour? It's very much like ammonia, and I think it can smell ammoniacal, right. um, like smelling salts, if you like, but you know, right. probably... Um, and that is quite unpleasant, but I wouldn't necessarily say it would smell like fish to everybody, no. Right. I was quite surprised by that, wasn't expecting that. And I feel quite relieved, actually. It's um, a long time not knowing what it was and just thinking it was, you know, it was me, it was, um, that it was my fault. And now I know that it's, um, it's a medical condition, so it's a relief, really, to have a diagnosis. Free from the cycle of blaming herself, Rachel can now learn about a real condition and find treatment.